huge pot of water here and I'm using a big pot well for two reasons one so it's easy for you all to see on camera and two I'm making quite a bit because I usually make this in a huge batch and I freeze for days I don't feel like how you know it's a long process it takes a few hours to make this because we're using salted beef so I'm only trying to go through that hassle all the time so in here I have about two and a half liters of water that's come up to a boil and I have pre-cooked salted beef ribs um, when mommy would make this when we were smaller I don't remember it being um, beef ribs but according to her there was bones so it must have been it must have been beef ribs anyhow I'll show you guys in a second how um, how, how I got it if you saw my um, my salt beef kalaloo recipe you would have seen me prepare prepare the salted beef so what I did was I brought a big pot of water a big pot of water up to a boil I added the salted beef in there and um, I allowed it to cook for about an hour and 20 minutes the longer you cook it the more tender it is very tough and I did say I'm making a huge pot of dal so in goes the yellow split peas and that is five cups of yellow split peas and if you want to mix it up if you want to put some lentils in here if you wanted to put green split peas it's totally up to you and immediately the water cooled down that split piece has been washed until the water ran clear my heat is on high so I'm gonna go in with my turmeric or what we call saffron not saffron but saffron and in, and that's gonna add that color and that flavor and everything else it's high in antioxidants so yeah we've been using the good stuff long time now yeah, it may look like a lot of turmeric but it will add that lovely flavor as I add and if you want to hold back on the amount that you use it's totally up to you now since this is a water-based dish we need to add a ton of flavor in there but before we add the flavor ingredients to the pot what I like doing is bringing it all up to a boil first you're gonna see sort of foam um, start to accumulate at the top we're gonna skim that off and then we're gonna add the flavor ingredients because if we add the flavor ingredients now when we're skimming chances are we may remove some of it in less than three and a half four minutes it's already starting to get that bubble and there is that sort of frothy foamy stuff at the top so I'm gonna discard that just to get rid of it now I'm gonna go in with a large onion black pepper a ton of garlic there's about 12 cloves of garlic in there because again I'm making a huge pot of dal here you guys can make half you can cut back the recipe by a half or a quarter or whatever it is and you know we have this recipe not the salted beef version but other versions of dal on the website at caribbeanpot.com um, smaller version so you can check it out there for that little kick I've got a scotch bonnet pepper here what I call Caribbean sunshine and I just cut it in half and for flavor without the heat I've got a couple pimento peppers and pimento peppers are not spicy it's all about flavor and it's called a seasoning or a flavor pepper this is what it looks like when it's ripe I'm just gonna remove the stem and I'll break it open oh the smell is just incredible no heat whatsoever but tons and tons of flavor and this here ladies and gentlemen needs to cook until everything starts falling apart well the beef will stand up like yo that thing will remain there hard and thing and thing but i like it especially for the flavor that beef flavor from that the salty briny flavor it's just incredible and i remember this being one of my favorite dal that my mom would make when we were growing up on the islands because the pieces of beef with a slight piece of fat in there it was like finding a piece of gold boy but anyhow we want this on a rolling boil you don't need to put the lid on there but you do need to monitor the liquid level once it starts going down too low add more water as needed we didn't add any salt because the remaining salt in the salted beef could technically season this perfectly for us we will check it at the end and we will adjust it at that point but don't add any salt here it's been going for an hour and a half yes I did have to add water so I ended up with about 
three liters of water in total as I mentioned earlier this is a massive pot of salt beef dal so it did need quite a bit of liquid what I'm gonna do at this point now is taste it for salt and you will adjust the salt because um, the salted beef would have already rendered out all of any remaining salt in it and we got to do a few things here so one of the personalizations is to to uh, taste it for salt adjust it then using my trusty tongs I'm gonna take out the pieces of salted beef and set it aside because we've got to swizzle the dal and not only will I remove the pieces of salt beef out of here I will also remove it off the bones as well and I'm gonna chop it up into small smaller pieces the meat that is the bones don't need to go back in here now here is my swizzle stick and this is a classic Caribbean swizzle stick and what you're gonna do is you're gonna put your hands on one side on the other side and go at a back and forth motion thus spinning this and it's gonna break down and puree the yellow split peas into us well this is the other sort of personalization you will try to make it as smooth or as chunky or whatever sort of texture that you like so with the back and forth motion you can see what's happening here and it's going nice and silky smooth you gotta love the consistency and texture here um, keep in mind as you do this my stove is still on but the residual heat will continue cooking this and thicken it up further plus as it cools it will thicken up further so keep that in mind yeah it will take three or four minutes back and forth motion like I'm doing here but you can see the sort of smooth silky consistency I'm getting here the texture is everything in a dough plus the flavors of course I am all done now if you're using an immersion blender I would highly recommend that you pulse it and not have it continuous if you allow it to go continuous you will get a lot of froth building up on the top and nobody ever want froty dal no man nasa 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 and you would have seen me do this in other versions of dal that we've done i've got my little frying pan here and to that i'm gonna add olive oil i'm going in with about three tablespoons of olive oil we've got cumin or what we call jira and even more garlic i've got about seven cloves of garlic i just smashed we're gonna put that on a medium flame now and we're gonna bring it up to temperature and when i say temperature you want it hot you can use vegetable oil any sort of oil uh, canola anything corn oil yeah do your thing i like using olive oil this is the one time you know and i was i was almost belittled a while ago when i did a version of dal and the garlic burnt and you know someone left a comment there not knowing the culture not knowing how we do things said that i just ruined the entire dish by burning the garlic you want the garlic to go almost black and you want this to be smoky and hot and this process by adding this and tempering it into the dal over there that's called chunky so we got to chunk it down but i'm going to put it up on the fire now and we're going to get it nice and dark and smoky and everything else and that there that finishing step don't sleep on it now if you have some more if you like it really spicy you can add some pepper in there as well but i'm only rocking it so quickly before we move on this is the salted beef or naval beef as it's called in canada i'm just gonna crack open the container like so and all it is, it's sitting, it's pieces of beef ribs sitting in the brine. Yeah, it does look kind of bloody and everything else. But um, if you're looking for it, it's called, there we go, it's called cured navel beef. As the oil heats up for us to chunky the dal, here is where now I'm going to add back the pieces of salted beef. I remove the bones as I said I would. And we've got that sizzling, dark, nice goodness here. Just look at that now. Oi, oi, oi. And all you would do is then just pour it in. The oil could have been a little bit more hot to be honest with you. But you want to give that a good stir. And the classic way of chunking dal um, is using a ladle um, to heat all of this. And I'm just going to scrape all that down in there. That roasted cumin, that fried cumin there is proper things, boy. Why are you trying to not join the party? What's wrong with you? 
Anyhow, your oil should have been a little bit more hot than that, but I got the color on the um, on the garlic that I wanted to. The classic way is using a sort of a scoop. I think it's called a kaichul. I'm not sure what the name is, and every time I'm always corrected what the name is, but you would use, you would heat it. I'm using a small frying pan. You would heat the oil and the garlic and everything else. Then you would pour it in, go all the way down to the bottom, submerge it and cover it quickly because the fumes that's coming out, and I know if my dad is watching this video right now, he would say, boy, and I tell you, you have to cover the pot right away. Try that way, it will work nicely for you. <laughs> Sup soldiers? Listen, if you enjoy this recipe, I'd really appreciate it if you hit subscribe and click that bell notification thing. If you've made the recipe, take a picture and send it to me, email address down here. I mean, I'm trying to tell people the email address, them butts will take the address and do all kind of thing with it. And tag me on Instagram at Caribbean Pod. I really appreciate you guys and thanks for being in my kitchen with me today. Irene, Irene. Chris here, CaribbeanPod.com. Always a pleasure having you guys here in the kitchen with me. Dal, very simple. All you need is yellow split peas, some onion, some garlic, some turmeric or saffron, uh, sofran. And the end there, we finished it off with that chunky kind of method there. And it is ideal. Now, I made this with the salted beef. And again, I made an, a huge part, yeah? Because I'm gonna, after I'm done eating, I'm gonna freeze, I'm gonna put it in containers and freeze up and then it thaws up perfectly. Um, do give it a try. We use the salted beef. If you don't wanna use salted beef, you can keep it vegan by putting nothing in there. Or I have a version where I use salted pigtails. And speaking about salted pigtails, I just showed you guys here on YouTube and Facebook how to make your own salted pigtails at home. Should you be interested in a video showing how to make this salted beef, leave me a comment down below and I'll get to that recipe soon. Irie, Irie, now remember to taste it for salt and adjust and all kind of thing like that, eh? Yeah, man. What's up, soldiers? Don't forget to click subscribe. If you've already clicked subscribe, hit that bell notification thing. I want to all you missing out on the new videos, man. Come on, click.